Dear Lord, we ask that you remind them that all their skills and their talents come from you and that we play in honor of you, dear God. We ask that you allow them to relax, dear Lord. Allow them to come out and just have fun with their teammates. And we pray that you can keep both teams safe from any serious hurt, harm, dangers, or injuries. And at the end of the game, allow every member of this team to come in here saying they did their best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer. Now that's the major key. Especially during playoff season. Where games become a tad bit more intense. And where fans' passionate emotions for the game is never in question. Where quick shimmies, loud clapping, and back flipping exemplifies it all. And as always, guidance is needed. Do what it is you did to get you here. But everything's gonna be just fine, okay? You're not by yourself. You don't have anything to worry about. We got you, your teammates got you, your coaches got you. We're here, okay? You want you to be confident in that. Go out there and do what you know how to do. All right, y'all been playing basketball your whole lives. Don't blow this thing all the way up to where, okay, I don't want to smell that dog. Don't think about that. Just play basketball. You'll be fine. Make sure you're doing the little things. Sit down on defense. Make sure you contest the shot. Most importantly, make sure you're boxing out. And we'll be just fine, I promise you. Play hard, play smart, play together, and have fun. And most importantly, give glory to the almighty OJ. Because in him, anything is possible, people. So let's get this thing started. Welcome to something South Carolina. Welcome to Wayne's World. And here are the city's finest. First game of the night, Spring Valley Vikings versus something Gamecocks. Let's see if the Gamecocks can hold court. I mean, it is believed that it's easier to win at home. Only one way to find out. Y'all enjoy the show. Right from the beginning, 6-7 guard Isaiah Moore was locked in for the challenge. Hitting this three as well as capitalizing on his turnover with the smooth jam. But best believe, Spring Valley was nowhere near afraid as they began to drive amongst the trees to showcase a multitude of moves they had stored up in their bag. A bag that's quite nice, I must say. <laughs> And to finish the quarter strongly, they must set up a key stop to withhold the momentum. Sending both teams to the bench for some quick wisdom. And coming out revived, something began to catch absolute fire from beyond the arc. Draining three after three. And even in their missing, something's huge post presence was right there to clean it up. And on the ensuing play, star guard Isaiah Moore dipped into his bag to pull out some nifty moves of his own. He was absolutely unconscious from three. And matching him was senior guard Talik Simon with a three of his own. The Gamecocks were simply too much for the Vikings to handle. The players and the fans know it. But this didn't stop the Vikings small trio from dipping back into their bag one more time before the game was over. But having enough, Mr. Corbett denied the Vikings while also connecting on this no-look pass from Talik Simon to finish strongly. This would ultimately seal the win for the Gamecocks, who were going to win 77 to 58. Okay, it's only gonna get tough, but I want you to continue to kind of condition your mind to, you know what I'm saying, expect that. All right, but you ain't no reason to be, you ain't no reason to be afraid. All right, the nerves, like Coach said yesterday, are to be expected, but you gotta come out and play. All right, once, once the ball is tipped, everybody gotta play. I thought we did a good job, great run in the second half. All right, we just gotta, we gotta learn how to put our foot on the gas and stay there. Okay, but I take a great run, way to work hard, way to shoot, way to run the floor, Jay, just overall good job. Yeah, I'm proud of all y'all boys, man. Appreciate the great coach we have, man. I've been on us since. 
since the summertime, I ain't gonna lie. That just helped us in the long run for real. All that running we did, we did it for a reason. It's just one step at a time. Like they say, no game is important than that. Get caught! Get caught! But unfortunately, the Gamecocks and the Gators were going to lose in the next round's playoff game, causing their seasons to both be cut short. Great season, Scott. But transitioning to the most exciting game of the year, we are live in the nest and they see floor territory. So what's the keys for war, coach? It's like I said last night, it starts on the defensive end. You got you know, four teammates out there with you on the defensive end. And you cannot win, coach kind of touch on, you can't worry about wins and losses at this point in time. You just go out and do the process. You do the process and the win will take care of itself. Okay, it always does, it always does. You just go through the mechanics of what you're supposed to do, what you've been taught to do, what you've practiced to do from the get-go, Everything's going to be fine, okay? And stay together as a team out there. No matter what happens, stay together as a team. Pick each other up. And finally, the game you guys all waited for. Enjoy the shot. And for James Reese, a show it definitely was. We're following his gym. Ja added a little jelly to complete his first basket. While also trying to dime on the next play to only be denied by Reese's monstrous block. Which allowed Reese to strike quick fire to hit three statement making jumpers to let Ja Moran and the Knights know whose house they were really playing in. And to help, Superstar sophomore Christian Brown added two layups to expand the Falcons' lead. But Morant's help stepped up as well. As Dakota Jennings finished this strong layup in traffic, while also blocking two shots, that led to the night's quick fast break, where Jennings threw down a monstrous momentum changing gun. And it was only right Moran did his favorite move. The ball fake three-pointer. Even Pop had to stand up for that one. In the halftime, the score was 27 to 21. And after halftime, the young phenoms were ready to re-showcase their skills. With Christian's smooth Euro step to set the tone, making John Moran pull out some sweet or d'oeuvre-like dribbles place on his no look dish while also hitting his counterpart Trevion Webber in the corner for three. He was unconscious from there all night. And Morant was really starting to dial in, finishing through contact. While also getting a key steal that led to a nice and one finish. And the travel quest for fans show much appreciation. That continued to spur their star's fire, which allowed him to contribute a three-point basket as well. And with the rare turnover from James Reese, the Knights were able to cap their lives with a smooth layup. But stopping the run was sophomore Christian Brown with this jelly-like finish through contact causing their fans to flex like never before. Their passion was undeniable. And going to the fourth, Crestwood trailed by five and needed a big quarter from their senior guard, Trevion Webber. And what they needed, they got. As Webber struck fire from beyond the yard. But it was only right that his explosive adversary came back with the scoring response of his own. Which sparked Moran to jump back into action with this relentless effort to score his layup on the third try. But only needing one try, Deshaun Thompson threw down a nasty slam to ignite the crowd. 
And jumping back into the mix, Rubber will put his sweet stroke from three on display. And of course, Reese had to have a response of his own with this acrobatic layup around the hoop. But Weber wasn't backing down. Scoring another three-point basket to keep the Knights within reach. And hoping to respond, Reese hit a mid-range jumper that would not count. But what would count was this timely steal and score that made the crowd go absolutely crazy. And fans expressed their passions freely. But on the next play, Dakota Jennings hit a key mid-range jumper that again would be followed by a James Reese field goal. And again, senior guard Trevion Webber had a three-point response. This time, plus one. This ignited the Knights fans and his teammates like no other. And now it was almost clear that James Reese couldn't be stopped. But neither could the Knights. As Moran drove and dished to his teammate Dakota Jennings for an easy layup. And from post player to post player, D. Thomas added a key layup as well. While also making what could have been the play of the game with this block. And so the Knights were forced to foul. Sending Matthew Jameson to the line to shoot two. He would go on to hit both free throws. Giving the Falcons a three point lead. And forced to foul again. The Knights would send Corey Riley to the line to shoot two. He went on to miss both free throws, which led to a mysterious offensive foul call that would give Crestwood a chance to tie the game up. They say pressure buzz pipes. Let's see. Unable to get the ball into the hands of Moran, the Knights pushed it up the floor to hit Deontay Lambert who heaved the miraculous three to go in at the buzzer. The fans couldn't believe it. The players couldn't believe it. Man, I couldn't even believe it, to be honest. And so over time it was. And starting out the overtime quickly, was James Reese with the smooth left. And just like all game, Weber had to add his rebuttal to this conversation like batter. But the Falcons began to pound it inside to score two strong finishes to extend their lead. They would eventually go up 90 to 80 with these two free throws. But John Moran would not accept going out just so easily. As he slithered through the lane on this play, as well as grabbing this steal and drawing the foul. He would make one of the two free throws. And to immediately make up the miss, he hit a three to chip at the lead. And stepping up in an admirable fashion, Weber caused the steal that eventually led to him hitting this three to bring his team within one. The crowd went crazy. And carelessly throwing the ball away, James Reese gave the Knights a chance to take the lead. And following Reese's lead, Morant would go on to cough up the ball for a Falcons easy score which sparked another costly mishap that would eventually put Reese on the line. He would go on to make one of the two free throws. And having a chance to make their own, the Knights missed both of their free throws to trim the lead. But the game was not over. The Falcons called the timeout they didn't have, which gave Moran a chance to bring the game 
within two and received the ball. This was the moment of truth. And taking on the challenge, Morant would avoid two defenders to get a good look. The rims were not so kind this time, causing the Crestwood Knights to lose by one point. But best believe, respect for greatness was shown. school and your family. You represent the Crestwood community now. Yes, you did. I tell you, nothing, nothing we can say will probably take away. You got to deal with that with your own self. But I will say this. I had doubts at one time going into for his practice how you felt about going into this playoff. But I'm going to tell you what. I can't be no more proud of y'all yeah. tonight. Yeah. Honestly, God, y'all left everything out there on the floor. Nobody gave us a chance. Nobody gave us a chance. Nobody gave us a chance. At the end of the fourth quarter, we were still standing. At the end of overtime, we were still standing. Our head still up. When you walk out here tonight, you walk out with your head still up. And let them you still standing. No, we didn't get the victory. But we gained something a lot more. We gained a whole bunch of respect. <laughs> it's supposed to hurt. Because I know what that shows you. It means something to you. I'm proud to be part of it. I'm proud to coach with the coaches I coach with. I'm proud to coach the players we coach. It's proud to be Chris with them. You, you spread your wings out in the world and yeah. show what type of man he made you to be. Yeah. Me and with Cavs. What's up, people? Um, I'm so ecstatic and excited that you guys tuned in. Once again, if you like this video, hit the like button below. And if you want to subscribe, you have to subscribe. Subscribe below. The series is almost to an end. All the games and stuff is over, but we still have to decide on who we want to be something's finest. So, what I need you guys to do. This episode, and what I asked you to do last episode, I need you guys to, to send down your vote. Send down the player you believe is the best player in the city, and, and let us know. I can't wait to hear back from you guys. I can't wait to see you guys on episode 6. Episode 6 of Waynesboro is coming. It will be revealing who we have chosen as something's finest. But I can't wait to see y'all till next time. I love y'all. I'll be praying for y'all. Y'all pray for me. One love, Waynesboro. I'm out. Not me.